However, when it's done from Crux Terminatus Minis, uh, just to, to give you this uh, Space Marine Mark IV Command Characters uh, video, it's not really so much a painting tutorial as it is a masking tutorial, I guess. But this is the uh, the box. Um, it's a sort of unboxing stroke semi tutorial, I guess. Um, love the PCs, you know, Forge World. Uh, you're going to get great sculpted PCs, even if there are the occasional miscasts in them. They're still incredibly detailed and I love them bits. I uh, just wish I could afford to buy more of them. Anyway, uh, that's beside the point. So um, there's our guys there, um, Captain Torso, um, and the standard bearer is uh, just coming out of the box just now. There's nothing as exciting as opening up a new mini, is there? Let's be honest. It's like Christmas Day. So having a shot, uh, playing with all the bits and bobs, uh, obviously off camera I give them a, a really good wash to get rid of the uh, silicon release agent um, but cannot wait to get started with this, um, this set. I decided I was going to go uh, for a you know a legion uh, I don't know a, a homebrew I guess um, I know that's very difficult to do with legions because they're all accounted for but um, Perhaps my guys are just after the heresy. So that's me getting ready to start. I'm super excited, let's go. Um, just basically taking the stuff off the off the sprue, being very, very careful. Uh, I've damaged Forgeral stuff in the past by cutting too close. So I'm leaving a, a fair amount and then taking it off with the scalpel blade uh, and sanding it down. And you can see there's some miscasts in this one. So there's a, a sort of rivet on the left there which didn't um, come through on the right there's an air bubble and you can see clearly there's a, a couple other air bubbles um, just dotted about the place which is a shame uh, considering you know you're paying a premium uh, for a premium product uh, and they're still sort of making sort of schoolboy errors in terms of that but anyway you'll see here I completely mis uh, pose these guys because the guy on the right shouldn't have both cloaks uh, in fact the guy on the right um, the right hand cloak should be on the guy on the left <laughs> but don't worry I work out before I start gluing anything so here's my midnight modeling nope there you go there's a the light on so um, the paint job fairly straightforward um, again it's a homebrew color for me just to try something else I'd never really painted green to be honest uh, it's not meant to be salamanders or anything like that it's meant to be just you know whatever I wanted to do so I battle damaged them up um, Again, the green highlight, I think it actually looks a lot uh, nicer, um, less jarring, uh, perhaps, in the natural, uh, with your human eye, as opposed to watching it on the video, but there you go. So, uh, gold-plated bolt pistol, pistol for the um, standard bearer, and the standard bearer's helmet. Uh, again, uh, I would have um, airbrushed this white, um, had I thought about it properly before getting stuck in. Um, backpack, again, I like the, the Mark IV um, sort of armour backpack, it looks really businessman-like, so quite happy with the way that turned out. And then, posing the guy, uh, fairly straightforward, um, uh, obviously working on cameras is just a bit out of my technical expertise there, so sorry about that. So, he's standing there. Where's, where's the, the standard going to be? How is it going to sit? Is he, go, is he going to have it resting on the, on the ground? Because actually it wants to rest on his right boot. Uh, so I had to sort of work that one out. Um, and you'll see there a piece of bark uh, on the left hand side which I used to base them. Never really tried that before. Again, this is all about me trying to come on as a painter. That's why your comments are so very, very welcome. And, you know, good or bad, uh, I like to hear them anyway because everything will help me uh, as a painter. So just trying to work out what I'm going to do here. Um, I would love to, I had a freehand design of a sort of tribal dragon that I wanted to put on there, but to be honest, uh, freehand and me, never going to happen. I'm rubbish at that kind of thing. So in the end, I decided that I would try and do a sort of checkerboard pattern. So this is me just prepping out a couple of strips of masking tape and then making one centimeter cubes uh, which is really handy if you've got a cut mat that's got that on there. So uh, that's me in prep. So did a circle and did a hexagon um, just to, to see which one I wanted uh, on the middle. So in the end, I, I painted the Panzer Aces white for the, the base of the numbers, Radon Tam for the main background colour, and then the green was a mixture um, of uh, Model Air dark green and Caliban green with a little bit of goblin green chucked in there to lighten it up. 
So this is me putting on the very, very base layer for the, the number part in the middle. Um, again, even at this stage, I had no idea what the number was going to be or if it was going to be a design or a symbol or whatever. But in the end, um, I decided after um, a conversation with uh, a guy at work, Matteo, um, I thought, Do you know what, he's Italian, um, these guys look fairly Romanesque, it would make sense to have um, the number 7 written uh, with Roman numerals. So thanks Matteo for that inspiration. So um, I always wanted to make the left hand branch of the V uh, slightly thicker just to give it a, a more stylized appearance. So this is me practicing on a piece of uh, masking tape. Um, again, I wanted just to, to, to freehand that and there's you know, loads of people out there who would laugh at not being able to freehand such a simple thing but uh, I, I really have moments of doubt I think um, when it comes to painting Ford World models because they're so expensive I don't want to ever ruin one by a, a rubbish paint job. So I, I drew it on with a pen and then painted over the, the pen marks with um, just a, a four zeros brush there just trying to make that as, uh, as flawless as I could. Then it's a case of sticking the masking tape on and then flattening down the edges with a silicon sculpting tool. If you don't have one, uh, they're not that expensive. Uh, totally worth it if you're ever going to be masking stuff with an airbrush just to seal the edges. So starting off with the Radome Tan, um, just basically giving the, the whole banner the, the same undercoat. Um, over the top of that white there's a sort of slight shadow of the, the white which you'll see when it's finished it, it makes it look almost three dimensional which was entirely accidental I wish I could claim that I meant to do it um, so putting one centimetre squares over the top just trying to work out how that would work you know where would it fit uh, would, would there be any that were completely off the off the map and it turns out there were but do you know what yeah it works so um, just trying to do this uh, freehand as much as I possibly could and again sticking in the edges with the silicon sculpting tool. And uh, it's time for the green now so on it goes. Um, again at this point in time I had no idea how this was going to turn out so quite nervous but hey ho. Um, on with the green and then as I, as I peel the, the bits off uh, I'm actually quite impressed with the, the way it turns out. That's why I like masking with an airbrush so much because it turns a rubbish painter uh, into someone who um, isn't ru isn't rubbish but isn't brilliant. So I'm quite happy with that. Off comes the hex skin in the middle. Uh, and as you can see, it actually looks quite nice, although far too brand new. So um, I'm going to uh, easily solve that problem with a, a sepia wash and some sponging of some dirt, grime, battle damage, all that kind of stuff. Obviously it's a it's a very, very, very important um, piece of the, the Legion or Chapter's uh, history, but it still gets mucky and muddy. So AK Interactive's Darth, Dark Earth Pigment, I nearly said Darth Vader there, um, to make it look just like it's seen a, a couple of campaigns, which it clearly has. Um, and then uh, we're nearly there, just just obviously highlighting the laurel wreath at the top. I had to make it slightly brighter because it wasn't sticking out against the, the green. So I painted it white and then painted it green again. One thing was a surprise though, I had to pin the um, the standard onto the arm and then pin the arm onto the model because uh, it cowped the model over. Um, Sorry to anyone who doesn't understand that word, couped is a, is a good old Scottish word meaning tipped over. Um, so in the end, you know, I'm so still so scared of painting Forge World Kit because I just have this fear that I waste the model and I don't do it justice. So uh, these guys, do you know what? At the end of the day, did I do them justice? Probably not. But um, I still quite like them. They're sitting in my display cabinet. Something completely different from any of the other minis that I've painted. Um, and that's what it's all about, it's about growing as a painter and having the, the balls to try something new. So um, I would really appreciate your feedback um, and if you could uh, comment, uh, like and possibly even subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so, uh, I'd be very grateful. So thanks very much and I hope you enjoyed it.